This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Now, apparently some time goes by, and the disciples now are starting to get rested. When I say time, I'm just talking a matter of week, two, I don't know. I don't, the, the Bible doesn't really say, but something is going on with the disciples, and they're really struggling with um, what to do with themselves now. I mean, Jesus is alive. Probably there's still some fear because, I mean, he, if he's alive, then probably the uh, authorities are going to try to kill him again. And uh, and they're, they still know that they were his disciples, so their lives are in danger. And they're just starting to, what do we do now? Jesus, are you going to continue doing what you were doing before, walking around, performing the miracles, healing and teaching? Are you going to continue doing that? Or what's in it for us, basically? What are, what are we supposed to do? The exact same thing that you do. And some of you are dealing with that even now in your life. Well, what am I supposed to do? Some of you have been dealing with that for your whole life. And by the way, I want to say something to our, to our folks who are over the age of 50. For those of you who are over the age of 50 and you're wondering, is God ever going to do anything through my life? Is He ever going to use me? Am I, am I, is God done with me? I'll never forget uh, my, my, my dad and I had this discussion at one point. And uh, somebody, he, he, lives in a, he lived in a uh, uh, retirement center there in Virginia. He and mom, mom is still there, of course. And uh, dad, uh, dad considered that his ministry. I mean, he figured that that's where God put him, and that was his circle of influence, and that was his ministry. And he ministered. He would visit those uh, those other residents. He'd go and he'd minister to them. He performed uh, he performed lots of funerals, and uh, even with the staff, not just with the residents, but with the staff. He married so many of the staff there. It was amazing. They, they were his they were his ministry, and he uh, he had had he had been discussing with some uh, there's some minister there. Uh, that was one of the residents. The dad came back to the to his apartment that afternoon, and he and I were talking. And he said, "This guy's just given up." And I said, "What do you mean he's given up?" He says he he thinks God's done with him, and he says there's just no point. He's just given up. And I said, "Do you do you find that a lot here?" And he said, "You know," he said, "I do find it a lot." He said because a lot of people think that all they're doing is waiting to die. He said and he said uh, the place they got dad lives called Liquid Manor. And uh <laughs> he calls it he called it the morgue. Or or no, not the morgue. The the mausoleum, that's what he called it. He said, this is a mausoleum. He never referred to it as Liquid Manor. He called it the mausoleum. Uh he said because people have this attitude. They come here, well, okay, I've lived out my life. I'm retired. I you know, I'm I'm just I'm just ready to to go now. If you have that attitude, then you are missing out on what it is that God wants to do in and through your life at your age. That's really important for you to understand. You look at what God did. Look at the, look at the, in the Bible, the, the history of the Bible, the, of the writing, the, uh, the things that it, that, that it talks about. And look how old some of the people were in the Bible that God used and did incredible things through. You're just a whippersnapper compared to some of them. And I am telling you right now that God is not finished with you yet. He is not done with you yet. If He was done with you, you'd be gone. But God is not done with you yet. He still has something He wants to do in and through your life. He still ha You still have a circle of influence. You, there are still things that you can do. One of my favorite things uh, to, to relate to this was Debbie Stevenson. She, even in her last few days, she had a ministry. She had a ministry of prayer that would just blow your mind. I remember uh, um, seeing the, the, her prayer sheets, and she'd get up every morning and go to the dining room table, and she would go through those prayer sheets and pray. She had a notebook paper that she'd just written out prayer things to talk to pray to, to talk to God about, and uh, sheets and sheets and sheets of those that she would just pray about. And I, I can't tell you what a what a what an amazing thing that was to go through that and see some of your names on there that she was praying for you every morning. That was her ministry. God wasn't done with her. I don't know who's praying for you now. But back then, <laughs> Tebby was praying for you. You know, that you have a ministry. You, you have a ministry no matter how old you are. And God has given you another day that He wants to accomplish something in and through your life. And so these... 
these disciples were thinking that, what now? We're done. It's over with. And it wasn't over with. It was just getting started. Frankie Schaefer, who uh, was 70 or 72 years old, something like that, when he wrote How Then Shall We Live, um, one, of, one, of the, one of the greatest challenging books, I think, um, for the Christian. And he was in his 70s, and he wrote two or three after that. You know, it was just, you know, God is just not done with you yet. And it doesn't matter how old you are, God isn't done with you yet. In fact, He's probably just getting started with what it is that He wants to accomplish in and through your life. And so these disciples are going through this thing like, what do we do now? Uh, Jesus has risen from the grave. Now what? What are we supposed to do? Tell people. People around here already know, you know, that He rose from the grave. I, I don't know what God wants from us. And a lot of you are saying the same thing. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.